There have been quite a few new exciting Cybertruck developments recently, including Cybertruck availability expanding, new range extender details, a report about Hyundai tearing down a Cybertruck for analysis, and more, which I plan to cover in this video, so stick around to find out more. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. Although the Cybertruck is currently the best-selling electric pickup truck, recently surpassing the F-150 Lightning for that top spot, recent developments have led some to believe that there are demand issues with the truck. These concerns stem from the fact that Tesla, in the past at least, had approximately 2 million pre-orders for the Cybertruck, and since Tesla has already opened up Cybertruck orders to the general public with no pre-order necessary, that seems like they've already gone through um, those who actually wanted the truck after all. However, pre-orders were global and not only for the US market, and Tesla only recently got approved to sell the Cybertruck in Canada, which will be the first country outside of the USA to get Cybertruck deliveries. In addition, you have to keep in mind that Elon Musk made it very clear recently that the Foundation Series trucks are nearing their end they're soon going to switch over to the non-Foundation Series Cybertrucks, which once again are $20,000 less than the Foundation Series versions. Yes, those trucks do come with some extra features, but $20,000 is a big difference and does make a big difference for affordability, I believe, for a lot of buyers. In addition, I believe there are a decent amount of buyers that are waiting for the rear-wheel drive Cybertruck option to be available, and that truck was estimated to be available sometime in 2025 with a starting price in the low $60,000 price range. That's what Tesla previously listed. And you may have read some headlines like this Edmonds article, making it appear like Tesla is ditching the lowest cost rear wheel drive Cybertruck. But this simply isn't the case. Tesla has never offered a rear wheel drive foundation series Cybertruck. And the reason why that option was deleted from the website right now is because the site has been switched over from a pre-order page to a regular configurator page that allows non-reservation holders to place orders. And since Tesla is only offering foundation series trucks right now, of course, the configurator page is only going to show the foundation series trucks that are available. So I don't believe this is any indication that the rear wheel drive Cybertruck is dead, but I believe Tesla will still offer that sometime in 2025. So if that's a truck that you're waiting for, I don't believe that it's gone. I believe it's going to be available. So I don't believe there's a reason to be disappointed about that. Another exciting detail that we learned since Tesla opened up the configurator is we actually now know the price that Tesla estimates for that range extender. The range extender, as a reminder, is going to be mounted in the back bed of the truck. It does unfortunately take up a portion of that rear bed space. However, it does add quite a bit of range to the truck. But as you can see here, Tesla lists the estimated price for that range extender pack at $16,000. When you go to place a Cybertruck order right now for a $500 deposit, you can pre-order that range extender. Now, when it comes to how much range it actually adds, this range extender should give you up to 470 plus miles of range as compared to up to 340 miles of range without the range extender. When it comes to the tri-motor version of the truck, you can get up to 320 miles of range without the range extender, but with the range extender, it looks like you should be able to get up to 440 plus miles of range. So for $16,000, the range extender pack adds somewhere between 120 to 130 plus miles to the Cybertruck. So I believe that makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. The price is not too crazy. It's actually around what I expected. And for those who do a lot of towing with the Cybertruck, this is going to be, I believe, a really good add-on. And if you do long trips with the Cybertruck, that could also make a lot of sense. Now, do be aware though, this will likely change the payload rating of the truck because you're adding extra weight to the back of the truck. It'll be interesting to see exactly how much this pack weighs and what the new updated payload is for the truck and if it affects the tow rating as well. But nonetheless, I believe this does make a lot of sense for a lot of people. However, if you're considering the range extender pack, do be aware that it actually gets mounted to the back of the bed of your Cybertruck and it's not going to be easy to remove it. As Wes, who is a Cybertruck lead engineer, wrote on X, quote, any range extender offered by Tesla will be structurally mounted so it's safe in a crash. Moving on, if you have not yet driven a Cybertruck, now is a good opportunity to do a demo drive 
of the Cybertruck because if you go to Tesla's website right now, Tesla is offering scheduled demo drives of the Cybertruck. I will put a link in the video description if you're interested in that. You can see if there is a Cybertruck in your area that you can demo drive. If you've been waiting to make a buying decision until you could actually drive the truck, now is your time. So definitely go check that out if you're interested. Another interesting piece of Cybertruck news that I came across is the fact that reportedly Hyundai has torn down a Cybertruck for analysis. And it looks like Hyundai might be interested in entering the electric truck market in the USA. At least that's what it looks like based on them tearing down the Cybertruck. And Hyundai is doing a great job with electric vehicles right now. I would love to see Hyundai Kia come out with exciting pickup truck options. And I believe they would be great options that a lot of truck buyers here in the US would like. I know I would definitely be interested in one depending on the specs and the price etc. But this is really interesting news and it's exciting to see the competition actually tear down the Cybertruck and learn from what Tesla is doing with a truck. Of course, there are a lot of unique technologies that Tesla built into that truck and it really looks like nothing else on the road. I don't expect Hyundai to copy the Cybertruck, but I believe they will learn from manufacturing efficiencies that Tesla built into the truck. The next Cybertruck item that I want to cover comes down to the cost of ownership and how much you can save by driving electric over a gas or diesel truck. So if you mostly charge at home, charging an electric vehicle is considerably less expensive than fueling up a gas or diesel truck. This is something that I and others have talked about quite a bit in the past. Well, on that topic, Dan Burke on X.com recently posted that in his own use case, towing with a Cybertruck saves him around $65 per day as compared to that same load with a Ram pickup truck. In this post, it's written, Cybertruck doing the work. It's replaced my Ram as the around town tow vehicle for the construction trailer. Even with reduced range, most of my trips are 15 to 20 miles each way a few times a day. Saves me almost $65 a day in fuel. Saving $65 per day if you do the math on a monthly basis, that actually pays for, the savings there pays for a large portion of your monthly payment for the truck. For example, if you do the math, if you work five days a week and you save $65 per day, that equates to a savings of $325 per week. If you work four full weeks in a month times $325 of savings per week, that equates to a savings of $1,300. If you go to Tesla's website right now, Tesla estimates that with a 4% down payment, an APR of 5.99% and a loan term of 72 months, your monthly payment would be around $1,627 per month. So in this particular case, for example, if you were to buy right now a Foundation Series Cybertruck and save $65 a day in fuel with the scenario that I just mentioned, that would be equivalent to a monthly payment of around $327 for the truck when you factor in those savings. And that doesn't even factor in the savings from not needing oil changes and other maintenance that's required typically with a gas or diesel truck. Now, with that being said, when it comes down to the specific details and the calculations for this $65 per day savings, Dan replied, quote, how? Because that's how much gas I put in my Ram almost every day when pulling this trailer. It weighs 6,300-ish pounds on a normal day, and the Ram gets right at 9 miles per gallon pulling it. The Ram has a bunch of performance mods, which is great for power, but sucks down fuel. Premium fuel, no less because of the towing tune I run on it. The Cybertruck is averaging 675 watt-hour per mile on the same drive if I stay off the highway. On the highway, it's around 824 to 875, depending on wind. So on a typical day, 160 miles divided by nine mile per gallon times $3.95 equals $70. If I charge at my house off peak, it's 4.5 cents a kilowatt hour. 100 kilowatt hour back to the battery at 4.5 cents, and that's about $65 a day in savings. Now I know a lot of you are going to be paying a lot more than 4.5 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity. But it's interesting here that the off-peak rate that Dan is getting is so low. But even if that rate was three times that, and you actually paid somewhere around 13 and a half cents per kilowatt hour, still there would be around a $56 savings with that same scenario per day. Electricity would actually have to be around 70 cents per kilowatt hour for a break even in the fuel electricity costs. And I don't know anyone who has a residential electricity rate at 70 cents per kilowatt hour. 
Now, some of you might be saying, yeah, but the Cybertruck costs more initially. Well, when you actually look at the cost of a fully loaded pickup truck, which the Cybertruck is fully loaded, it has a lot of technology. But for example, in an analysis that I did last year, if you look at, for example, a Ford F-150 all wheel drive hybrid pickup truck with a platinum trim level with some upgrades, that truck after fees comes out at around 83,000 plus dollars. And that compares to the non-foundation series Cybertruck, which once that's available with added fees should come out at just over $82,000. So those price points are very similar. In addition, based on the analysis I did last year for a five year true cost of ownership, driving 75,000 miles in five years with those purchase costs of the Cybertruck, the non-foundation series truck cost, I found that on average, it should cost around a dollar and one cent per mile to drive the non-foundation series dual motor Cybertruck in that five year period of time. A dollar 21 per mile for the tri-motor version of the Cybertruck, once again, the non-foundation series truck. And that compares to the Ford F-150 hybrid, the platinum trim level once again, which according to my calculations should cost around a dollar and 15 cents per mile to drive. I also calculated how much it would cost to drive the Ford F-150 Raptor R because I believe that's pretty comparable to the tri-motor Cybertruck. And as you can see there, that will cost you somewhere around $1.54 per mile. So as my past cost analysis showed, driving even an expensive electric pickup truck like the Cybertruck is less expensive, should be less expensive than driving a similarly equipped internal combustion engine Ford pickup truck. With all that being said, the Cybertruck is indeed a success and it will only get better with time. And I predict that the Cybertruck will remain the best selling all electric pickup truck for the foreseeable future. Do let me know in the comment section below if you're waiting to purchase a Cybertruck until Tesla starts offering the cheaper non-foundation series trucks. I would be interested to know that. In addition, if you're waiting for the rear wheel drive Cybertruck, that 60 some thousand dollar version, which should be available in 2025, let me know about that in the comment section below as well. I'd like to say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Once again, your support does make a big difference and helps make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.